Hey guys, Dre Amen, back for part two. Travaris Cadet, Saints running back, jack of all trades, he does it all. Really great season last year coming out of the backfield. Had career numbers and receptions and a lot of other marks. And we talked about all that in part one, part two. We're definitely going to get into the three minute play with DA. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about your charity work. I know I was reading a lot of stuff about Haiti and some of the other stuff you were doing. I know during the season I messaged you and you were hanging out with kids on the Air Force Base on an off day. So tell me a little bit about just your charity work. This is the kind of stuff I'm able to talk about on the sidelines on TV. So right. tell me more about just the stuff that you're into charity wise. I'm always seeing good things about you as far as charity. So tell me about that. I mean, I have a great relationship with the lady who runs Athletes for Charity. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Kathleen. She's out of New York. She's a lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. I think she do a great job in the community worldwide. Mm -hmm. Not with me, but other NFL players. And she's oh. Haitian. My right. father is biologically Haitian. Right. Um, I, a lot of people don't know that, but um, I've been donating to you know, athletes for charity for, I want to say, probably since my rookie year. Oh, cool. And me and her developed a great relationship over the phone or whatnot. We talked about actually going to Haiti this year, um, doing some stuff uh, in, the com in the community mm -hmm. and not just being there just, you know, financially, but really being a you know, a leader for those kids over there who's from, you know, a country that have, has faced so much adversity with hurricanes and different storms. And like, you know, I have family over there that died this year from the hurricane. I mean, I think it's a thousand people died in Haiti, I want to say, when the hurricane hit mm. or whatnot. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was a pretty strenuous time and some of, of those people that died was my, were, were my family members or whatnot so and not only in Haiti but in Miami the city in Miami I've did book drives at different elementary schools um I've did some stuff in New Orleans you know throughout the community going to schools talking to kids and just basically telling them don't be afraid to be different you know it's easy to follow the crowd but you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when you're singled out and you're doing the opposite of what the crowd is doing, mm -hmm. I feel like you're, you're going to be talked about about your fr friends. But in the long run, you know, those same friends are going to say, well, I wish I would have followed his footsteps or her footsteps in terms of being a leader. So, I mean, I do a lot of different things and I feel like I can do better, you know, with the work mm -hmm. or whatnot. And I think, you know, it's a lot and a lot more to come with me and Miss Kathleen with Athletes for Charity because I nice. think she has a passion for making kids smile, making kids feel better. Mm -hmm. And not just kids, but grown-ups as well. Wow, and what's the website or is there is, is it her Instagram or where can people find out more about Athletes she for Charity? She has an Instagram okay. and she has, also she has a Twitter panel. Okay. Or whatnot. So that's so, where people can find out more about Athletes for Charity. Right, right, right. Very right. cool. And another thing that you were into, I know that we were talking about this as well, was you were doing something with Toya Wright right, and right, BET. Right. And I know that was popping in New Orleans. So let everybody know what was up with that and how did that all come about? I mean, you know, Toya Wright, she's very known. You know, she, right. you know, she's her and Lil Wayne had a relationship <laughs> or whatnot. And she's popular in her own way. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a... You know, a public figure, you know, for, you know, women, you know, of yeah. all races. And, you know, she, I think she does a great job, you know, with, with her work and marketing her to be the best she can be. And I was, you know, happy to get the opportunity to work with her on BET, talking about, you know, the New Orleans tradition and mm -hmm. Mardi Gras, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talked about what Mardi Gras means to the city mm -hmm. or whatnot. And... We did it, you know, on Bourbon Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was fun. We talked about just the culture of New Orleans, the food, the people, yeah. the fans, um, just the, the, the New Orleans spirit, you yeah. know, because New Orleans have so many different, yeah. you I know. I haven't even been there. I've covered the Saints on the road, but I've never been. <laughs> I need to get there. Yeah, like they have Little like Lumbo, you know. festivals and, you know, these, these like Mardi Gras. You know, they take that stuff serious. They actually give those kids, the kids in New Orleans, in Mississippi, they have a long, you know, vacation yeah. when those holidays come around. So, for the most part, I think it was something special. And I think that, you know, people really got to see what we think about the city. I love it. I love shout out New Orleans. All right, well, it's time for the three minute play with DA. This is rapid fire questions showing you more about your favorite players off the field, off the court. 
whatever it is that they do, we peel back. That's what we do. That's why I do these interviews. So T, are you ready? So I'm gonna just throw something out there. Mm -hmm. Just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right, I know you like to travel. So what's your favorite place to travel in the off season? Like just vacation, when, you're, when you don't have to practice, when you don't have to work out, what's that destination? Uh, Miami. Okay, so we're going to stay in Miami. It's Miami all day, all day. All right, what's your hype music before a game? When you're out there on the field, I see you guys with your earbuds in. Uh, what are we listening to to get hype for kickoff? What's that What's that artist or what's that song? I mean, behind Tupac, I say <laughs> it's Lil Wayne. I listen to Put Me In The Game. Oh, so, you, so before a game, we listen to Put Me In The Game. <laughs> yeah, okay, Put Me In The Game. <laughs> Perfect. All right, best restaurant in New Orleans. I know New Orleans is known for their food. Mm -hmm. So what's the best restaurant? Uh, Chop, Chop House in New Orleans. And what is Chop House? It's a steakhouse. Oh, I love steakhouse. It's versatile. It has seafood, mm -hmm. steak. It has a New Orleans flavor. All right, I like it. Favorite yeah. actress. Who's like, when something comes out, you're like, I got to see that. That's, that's my girl. That's my, that's my person. Who's that actress? I gotta say Martin Lawrence. Oh, so you're gonna go with a guy? Okay, so what is it about? What is about him? Um, funny, man. Because <laughs> he's still funny after you all know, this time. Did you used to watch the show Martin? Like, yes. <laughs> but you know, to be honest, the Martin show wasn't. It that was funny, it. but it wasn't that funny to me. It's like his movies are, are, are hilarious. Like. Okay, so his mu his movies are funnier than the show. Right. I thought the show was so funny. The one where him and Tommy they were on vacation, and there was like the little like hamster was just stuck in the room or something. Right. Do you remember that episode? I mean, it's it so good. many. I couldn't stop laughing. That was like the funniest Martin episode I ever saw. It was the hamster or the gerbil, or whatever the little furry thing was like stuck in the room with him and Gina. Yeah, I mean, it's so many episodes with Martin, so I, mean, I can't kind of remember that together. one, but... Okay, but it's more of the stand-up and, like, him as a comedian and in movies. Yeah. I think he, I think he's just funny as a person. You know how, like, some people don't want to be funny? But they're funny. But they're funny, just you know naturally. what I'm saying? Okay. I think, you know, he'll brighten up your day. I like that. I like that. So we're going with Martin. Yeah, we're going with Martin. Okay, Most who definitely. is your best friend on the team? That's your guy. I know you're close to a lot of guys on the team. We got a lot of respect for Drew Brees, but who's your boy? Who's that guy that's like, that's my guy? Uh, I gotta say Mark Ingram. Okay. There Big Ing. Shout out Big Ing. How's okay. flow, baby? There you go. There you go. Okay, what is it? Just what does he bring to the table that just makes him stand out as a friend? What is, what's the relationship like with you guys? Oh, his hard work and de dedication, I respect. Um, I feel like we got a, you know, a good friendship. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're brothers in arms. Yeah. I like his demeanor. I like what he stands for. Um, I mean, we can talk about, you know, talk in depth outside the field. I would say, mm -hmm. um, about a lot of different things. But and we've been there together. You know, we might well say six, seven years. I so mean, it's, it's just it's six put years for me. Yeah. Time seven years for him i mean pretty much for the most part we've been there the longest and of course we developed a, a great relationship you know all right we got a nice little shout out all right favorite holiday i know mine is new year's eve so what is we go around the year what's that one holiday where it's like i look forward to that one that's 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 it that's my stuff right there i think my my favorite holiday is what the is the little kids around the world best holiday is Christmas. all day <laughs> Gifts, gifts, y'all, gifts. Okay, so is it is it just because it's making kids happy, or is it family? What is it about Christmas? I mean, it's the like feeling. Able? Like, it's no feeling, no greater feeling than the Chris, the Christmas atmosphere. You know, like it's the most wonderful time. <laughs> yeah. Like, like your cousin is off camera here. You know, he raps, he got bars. But you know, I didn't know you could sing. I mean, we've been friends for a while. It came out right now. So. I mean, I'm just saying, like the Christmas spirit, snow, <laughs> snowman, okay, Santa Claus, presents. It's just you know, really cheerful, and it's just like it's good. I mean, it's not, it's not the same feeling I got when I was a kid, but I mean, come on. Everybody can feel when Christmas is here. I know. I don't know if everybody <laughs> can feel when Halloween is here or whatever yeah. that is. You know yeah, I, mean? I don't really, I haven't, I don't really dress up for Halloween. Right. So I don't really, I, I mean, it's cool, but I like Christmas too. That's probably my second favorite. 
I go on New Year's Eve because I feel like you're bringing in a new year and that energy at midnight. I just don't think anything compares to that when it turns to the next year. Yeah. So that's why that's my A1. But so then, you like do your countdown? No, I like five, doing a countdown. Yes. Four, I never miss a three. countdown. It's like five. And then you're just around people and everyone's like, oh, what's up? New Year's. You know, I mean, it's just fun. What's your usual setting though? Out somewhere. In a club yeah, or well, like a party or someone's house or just being around people I care about. So you're getting the full experience. Yeah, right? I'm getting the full experience. I'm toasting, you know, I'm like 10, 9, 8. So, you know, it's just real. Yeah. This is, there's an the energy at midnight. There's that feeling of the next year, that change in one minute. Right. There's nothing compares to that. All day. I respect it, you know. I mean, you know, I think this year I missed my countdown. I was asleep. No doubt. Well, I've covered games before where I wasn't <laughs> awake either, but if I'm not working, then we're going up. We're going up. All right, last one. Best piece of advice someone's given you in your life. Could be a teammate or a coach or a teacher or a parent. What, what's something that someone told you it just really stayed with you in your life? Um, I got to say, I mean, he didn't tell me this. Okay, who's he? We gotta, who is that? Darren Sproles. Oh, Darren Sproles. Okay, well, every, you know, people um, that are seeing this are going to know who it is because we be football fans, so. I mean, basically, his actions just told me, don't worry about what everybody else is thinking. Yeah. Just control what you can control. Mm -hmm. And that's being in the best shape, the best condition, the best condition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well prepared mentally and physically, and don't let a day pass without you know, putting your best foot forward, you nice. know, because I think a lot of guys get tied up, not just in our profession, but in everyday life is worrying about what everybody else think about them. Right. They're trying to prove something to them. The only thing you can control is what you do, your actions, you know. So if if it's one thing that I would say somebody's giving me advice wise, I was and this is actions, it's not words. Right. So. Actions. My dad always used to tell me that, too. Actions speak louder than words. So I say that. I think that gave me more. I think when I learned to do that, um, I think the more success I started to have. That's dope. So yeah, we can't worry about what other. Everybody has their opinion. Not everybody's gonna like you. Not everybody's gonna rock with you. You just right. gotta do you and hope for the best. Was there something that happened as to why he told you that, or did he just randomly tell you? Did you come to him and say, "Man, bro, like, did you come to him with something where he fired back with that, or did he just come? Did you just?" Did he just out of the blue say, yeah, don't worry about what people say? I mean, how did that come about, I mean, that conversation? I mean, me and Sproles have long talks all the time. Yeah. Even when he went to Philly, we continues to talk. It's like, mm -hmm. when we talk, it seems like this new stuff just pop up. Yeah. Just it's extend. just that chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm, I was a rookie coming into New Orleans, you know. I mean, he was a guy I looked up to, him and Pierre. Yep. Or whatnot. And yep. pretty much, like, those guys kind of groomed me and showed me the way. Not too many people have those great leaders when they come in the league. And I had some great leaders. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, both of them are great players. Mm -hmm. You know, great men, great players, great work ethic. Mm -hmm. You know, the team believed in them. Behind the scenes, yep. Coaches believed in them. And they were respected for a reason. But for the most part, I would say, you know, I was a rookie in learning, you know, and it's always great when you have that guy that you can look up to, or nice. those guys you can look up to and say, well, I know that these guys are doing this right. Right. You know what I mean? Well, Travaris, definitely want to say thanks for hanging out with me today. This was, we learned a lot about you. I think the fans are going to be really excited to find out these things about you that they may not have known before. So That's once again, right. thanks for making time for me. I know you're busy, so I really appreciate it. And everyone, make sure you keep a lookout for part one, part two, DA, yeah. TC, we're doing it big, hanging out, and really hope you guys enjoyed watching and thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Drew.